In working out the slope of the tangent line to a curve, we had to work out the value of this limit. That was defined to be the slope of the tangent line. This is such an important limit. This is such an important limit in calculus that we give it a name. It's what we call the derivative. So this is the most important definition in this course. This course is centered around the idea of a derivative and its applications. So we first need to start with what we mean by what is a derivative. What is a derivative of a function at a point? This is that definition. The derivative of a function f at a number a, which we denote by this symbol f with a little prime, so the function name with a little dash above it, which we call a prime, f prime of a, is defined to be this limit, provided it exists. So if the limit exists. If the limit doesn't exist, then the derivative doesn't exist, because the derivative is defined to be the value of the limit. So another way of saying this is, well, we know this limit is the slope of the tangent line. So really, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. The derivative is the name we're giving to the slope of the tangent line at a point on the curve. We had two different limit definitions for the slope of the tangent line. They were really just where we focused our attention, whether we used this sort of x going to a notation or this focusing on this h notation. So let's go ahead and work out the derivatives of some functions. Now, in some sense, we've already done this. I mean, we've already worked out slopes of tangent lines to functions. Now we're just doing this in the context of this new name that we're giving to the slope. So here, we've got that nice handy notation for the derivative or the slope of the tangent line. So f prime of 3 is the limit as, and I'm going to use the h one here, h goes to 0 of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. And so using what the function f is, we get that this is 1 over 3 plus h minus 1 minus a 1 half all over h. This simplifies down to 1 over 2 plus h minus 1 half all over h. I can put the top, the numerator, what's in the numerator, over a common denominator. The common denominator is, well, there's a 2 and a 2 plus h, so it becomes 2 minus 2 plus h over 2 times 2 plus h, and there's still this factor of h in the denominator. I see that this is a type 0 over 0 limit. I plug h equals 0 in. I get 0 on the top, 0 on the bottom. It means there's more work to do. I see that factor of an h in the bottom. That's the reason the denominator is 0. I need to get it to cancel with something in the top. And I see here that those 2's, there's a 2, a minus 2, those cancel off. So since those 2's cancel off, this reduces to negative h over 2 times h 2 plus h. Now I see the factors of h that can cancel. And I'm left with, well, no h in the bottom anymore, so I can now work out the value of the limit by popping it in, and that becomes a negative 2, or sorry, negative 1 over 2 times 2 plus h, so a negative 1 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And so there is the value of the derivative. So f prime of 3 is equal to negative 1 quarter. And just recall what our interpretation is. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So this is the slope of the tangent line. So this is supposed to be a little squiggly arrow. Maybe it didn't look like one. A little squiggly arrow pointing to the negative one quarter, that's the slope of the tangent line, also known as the derivative. Okay, so let's look at another example. In this next example, we're looking at, in some sense, sort of reverse engineering the process. I've now got a limit, and I want to recognize it as the derivative of something at a point. What's the function, what's the value of a, for which this limit represents the derivative of? That means I'm trying to think of it as a limit 
in the form of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So in this case, what is f? And what is a? So I now have to sort of match things up. Uh, the first piece, 2 to the h plus 3. Well, I want the function at a plus h to be 2 to the h plus 3. So it looks like the function should be an exponential of base 2. And it looks like the a value is 3 because of the h plus 3 here, and I need an h plus 3 then inside. And if I check f of a, so f at a would be 2 to the 3, or 8, so that works out to be fine. And f of a plus h, that gives me that. So this is f prime of 3, where the function is 2 to the x. So recognizing this limit as the derivative of 2 to the x when a is 3. Okay, so it's going to be important for us to be able to go sort of back and forth. Starting with a function and a point, writing down the limit that represents its derivative. Starting with a limit that represents a derivative, determining what function and what point that represents the derivative at. Okay, so let's look at another example. Let f of x be absolute value of x. Does the derivative at 0 exist? Does the derivative at 0 exist? Okay, so you may think to yourself, well, I know what the absolute value function looks like. It looks like this. If the derivative is supposed to represent the slope of the tangent line, well, I already know that there is no tangent line at that point, at the point corresponding to x equals 0. There's a corner there. There's no tangent line. And so since there's no tangent line, the derivative shouldn't exist. Okay, so the thing to note here was that that was our intuitive idea of what a tangent line was. We zoomed in, we zoomed in, we zoomed in. It didn't look like a straight line there. From that intuitive idea, we've now built up a definition of the slope of the tangent line involving a limit. So now to prove that a tangent line doesn't exist there, or in other words, to prove that the derivative doesn't exist there, we have to appeal to the definition, and the definition is involving that limit. So in order to prove using our definition of a derivative, that there is no tangent line here, that the slope doesn't exist, that the derivative doesn't exist, we have to use the limit definition. So let's go ahead and look at the limit definition. f prime of 0 is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 all over h. f of 0 plus h, so that's f of h. f is the absolute value function, so this becomes then absolute value of h over h. And this is a limit that we've seen before. We've seen that this limit, actually I don't need to write equal sign here, this limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. What's the reason it doesn't exist? We've already seen it doesn't exist, but let's just recall what the reason is. The reason is, as h gets close to zero, the absolute value function is behaving differently, whether h is positive or h is negative. So this starts to scream to us that maybe we should look at the one-sided limits, right-hand limit, left-hand limit. And when we did that in this case, we got two different values, in which case the general two-sided limit didn't exist. So the details were, as h goes to zero from the right of absolute value of h over h, well, as you go to, h, as you go to zero from the right, absolute value of h is just h itself. So that ratio is 1, and so the limit was 1. On the other hand, as you go to 0 from the left, absolute value of h is equivalent to negative h, and so that limit is a negative 1. And those two things are not equal, uh, not equal. Left and right hand limits are not equal, so the general limit does not exist. So the derivative doesn't exist. Does the derivative exist? No. There's our answer. No. The derivative does not exist there. Geometrically, we knew why. That was using the intuitive idea. Now coming back and using the definition of derivative involving the limit, we can prove it doesn't exist by showing the limit doesn't exist. Okay, so now coming back to the uh, tangent line problem. If we have a function, 
y equals f of x, and we have a point that we're interested in, a, f of a, what is the equation of the tangent line? Well, we can now write that down in terms of the derivative. The equation of the tangent line is y minus the y-coordinate of the point you know is equal to the slope. And the slope is what we're calling the derivative. So there's the slope of x minus the x-coordinate of the point you know. And so there is the equation of our tangent line. Very nicely written. The equation of the tangent line is just in terms of the point you know and the slope, which is what we've defined to be the derivative. So let's go ahead and look at finding the equation of the tangent line to this point at the point where x equals 3. What we need to know is we need to know a point. The point that we want the tangent line to. Well, that corresponds to 3, comma, the y-coordinate of the point corresponding to x equals 3. We can get that by plugging it into the function. So that's f of 3. In other words, 3 and 1 half. 3 and 1 half is the point that we're interested in. What is our slope? Well, the slope we just worked out in the previous example. This is actually the example we just worked on. There's our function. There's our point. What's the slope? In the previous example, we found that the slope was negative a quarter. So we know that the slope f prime of 3 is negative 1 quarter. So the tangent line is y minus the y-coordinate of the point is equal to negative a quarter times x minus the x-coordinate of the point we know. So we could leave it in this form. This is the um, slope, point slope form involving a point you know and the slope, or we can write it in our slope intercept form. So that's negative one quarter x plus three quarters plus one half. So y is equal to negative one quarter x and then three quarters plus a half, so that's two halves, so that's five quarters. So there's the equation of the tangent line. A quick reality check. Uh, does the point 3, 1 half live on it? Plugging 3 in here, that's negative 3 quarters plus 5 quarters. That's 2 quarters or 1 half. So yes, that's, that's a point on this line. Just a quick reality check to make sure we didn't make any arithmetic errors. Okay, so this is the idea. We've introduced the slope of the tangent line by giving it now a, a name. It's called the derivative. We can compute the derivative. We can answer questions about equations of tangent line using the derivative. So as a, a last example, let's just look at comparing the derivatives at each of the points on the graph. So let's call these things something. I'll call that x-coordinate for each of these points, a, b, c, and d. And a few things I'd like to know. Um, for example, if I look at f prime of a, so I'm imagining that this function, or this graph, is the graph of f of x. What can we say about these things? Well, f prime of a, it's the slope of that tangent line. How does it compare to f prime of b? Well, f prime of a, the tangent line, has a smaller slope than the slope of the tangent line at b. So f prime of a is smaller than f prime of b. What else can we say? Well, maybe I'll just draw a few of them in here. There's all our tangent lines. We know that they're positive, so f prime of a and f prime of b are both positive. What can we say about f prime of d? Well, f prime of d, slope of the tangent line there, that would be negative. So I can see these kinds of things about the derivatives, straight from the graph. What about f prime at c? Well, it looks to be horizontal there in terms of a tangent line. A horizontal tangent line, the slope would be 0. So from all of this, we see that f prime of d seems to be the smallest. Then from that is f prime of c, which is 0. And then f prime of a is the next largest. And then f prime of b is the largest. So we can get this comparison between those values of the derivatives straight from the graph. So this is just interpreting the derivative as the slope of the tangent line and being able to read this sort of comparative information off of a graph. 
In the next video in this section, we're going to revisit the velocity problem and see how it's related to the derivative.